Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Soap Thing Project, or if you've been here before, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. In today's video, we're going to do a tour of the Soap Thing Shave Den. Last year, when I was living in southwest Illinois, and I moved across town into a bigger house, I did a tour of the new Soap Thing Shave Den, so we're going to do the same thing here today. Now, get ready for a tour of the Soap Thing Shave Den at Inserlik Air Base in Turkey. Moving through the master bedroom towards the shave den, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at this closet that you see right here. Now normally this closet door is closed when I'm filming uh, shave videos, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to keep it open to show you the uh, the soap thing stash here at Inserlik Air Base. This is obviously significantly smaller than my collection back in the States, but there's certainly enough here to have uh, plenty of variety to do shaves with. Now inevitably somebody's going to ask what that towel is doing there. That towel is up because that particular bin holds the Chosen 12 and we don't want you to see any of those prematurely so it's got a towel up to prohibit you from seeing in there. So these stackable bins are really interesting. They are obviously stackable as you can plainly see but first and foremost they're collapsible. They will collapse down to be about this tall, and when they do, they take up almost no space, and so they're perfect for setting up a temporary shave den. So everything that's on the top shelf is shaving soaps that I bought after I got here. There's about 25 of them up there. I, I would love to get maybe two or three more for, uh, for shaving during the winter, some good winter scents, warmer scents, but in the meantime, there's still plenty of variety to uh, to not get bored with your shaves. Towards the front we have some Crown and Crane, Wild Fig and Evergreen, and some Noble Otter uh, Hamami. And then we we'll actually have a bunch of these. Uh, these are two ounce tubs from Katie's Bubbles. Just a smaller size. I really wish more uh, shaving soap brands would do this, or more artisans would do this, because these are really nice if you're a hobbyist. They're they're smaller, lighter, cheaper, and they take up less space. So that's what's in the top bin. Okay, now we're at the second bin from the bottom. And this is the bin that all the aftershaves are in. And there's actually quite a few fewer aftershaves than there are shaving soaps. And the reason for that is, like, let me get on my soapbox for a minute. Here we have ProRazzo Red Aftershave Balm. I can make that work with any woody soap. So I have like, I could probably make that work with like five or six that I have in my collection right now. Same thing with this uh, WSP, this black amber vanille. I could easily make that work for any number of warm, rich, and sweet warm weather scents. I mean, it saves money and it takes up less space. Like, I, I, I really gotta laugh sometimes at people who think they must have matching aftershaves because you can make a lot of this stuff work for multiple shaving soaps. It really it really does uh, save on space, that's for sure. Now the shelf on the bottom, you might not be able to see in there that great with the lighting, but this shelf is where I put everything that's coming up next relatively soon in the Soap Thing project. Like here pretty soon I'm gonna do a review of uh, if I can show it to the camera here. This is the uh, PAA Aloha Smackdown. I'm going to do a review of that at some point soon. And then I got this uh, 345 soap tight lines. I'm really interested in uh, reviewing that. I've actually been shaving with this a lot lately. For some reason, I've been on a binge of uh, Creed Aventus. And then we have a couple of samples in here because, as everybody knows, I've been doing a lot more sample videos just because... When you have a limited collection, it's much cheaper to to use these because they only cost between two and four dollars a sample, rather than buying who knows how many new complete sets. And that's not even all of the uh, 
samples. I have a, a huge box of them in another room, so I have no shortage of <laughs> samples here in the Soap Thing project. Now below the uh, stackable bins is this top drawer. I'm going to open this really slowly because this is where all the razors are kept as well as a bunch of blades and just a hodgepodge of different shaving related odds and ends. We have this Razor Rock uh, Disruptor. That's kind of the designated uh, brush that I will give to new shavers who want to try wet shaving. We got some Prorezzo Blue back there. There's a couple different varieties of Arco that I picked up locally here in Turkey. We got some Lea, good for travel shaves. We got a couple of Arco sticks and then all my razors that are not in the rotation at the moment just kind of get gently put in there and so I don't want to yank this drawer open because it'll toss everything around but that's where most everything else is here in the shaved in at Insulic Air Base. So that pretty much covers the stash of soap and aftershaves that I have to last me until May of 2023 and I will put these bins where I got them from in the description of the video and anything else you see that you might be curious about I'll go ahead and put it in the description of the video as well. So let's go ahead and do a left face into the shaved in. And let's just go ahead and start right here. This uh, blade dispenser is from Mad Labs and right now it's full of uh, Gillette Platinum blades. And I can usually, it's hard to do it with one hand, but these uh, blades come out the bottom, just like you see here. And there's about a hundred or so uh, Gillette Platinum blades in there. That's what I use to do my head shaves. And right here, I have this PVC rubber um, drying space where the razor goes. I always take my razor completely apart after every use so that it can dry out, especially if it's steel. I don't care what people say, stainless steel can still rust. So I recommend that people take their razor completely apart and let it dry, preferably with the handle facing down so that any water can drip out. Plus it's also good to help your blade dry so that you don't get rust on your blade, which then will get transfer rust onto your razor. I mean, I'm dancing on my soapbox at this point, but that's what that's for. So right now we have the Mula Roca that's in the rotation. Here we have the QED Select Manchurian Silver Tip 24 millimeter. I think this is the uh, 6324 from QED USA. And then we have the Hendrix Classics and Company Stainless Steel Bowl. This is the straight walled one, the scratch and dent one that I got from him. It's actually in better shape than my other one at the moment. So stainless steel bowl from Hendrix Classics and Company. We got the, of course we got the feather blade bank here for used blades that it's time for them to go in the trash. They go in here. We have the PAA, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements Ice Tube Pre-Shave. I've been using this lately on the project and I'm not sure if I am going to continue using pre-shaves or not. If I do stop using pre-shaves, this will probably be the last one I use. And the only reason I'm really using this now is just because it gives a menthol cooling to the face. And this time of year in the hot balls of summer, that's really nice. And finally, on this part of the shave den, we have my brush cup. And this is just a $6 coffee cup glass coffee cup that I got from the base exchange. It cost me almost nothing. And so that's my brush cup for the moment here on the project. Okay, from here we're gonna take a slight detour and go straight down. And this is where all the brushes are kept that are not currently in use. There's, I think, nine of them in there. The most recent purchase I made was this one. This is from Trotter Handcrafts. I wanted to see what all the fuss is about. Everybody seems to be wanting to get their hands on a Trotter brush. And this is a white one. I got this from Shave Supply. And I gotta tell you, it's the funniest thing. I, I have this and then I have another brush coming in from uh, HL Thader. And if you want to do shave of the day photos that are color coordinated, all you really need is a white brush and a black brush. And you can photograph almost anything. Ask Glenn Sherman, he'll tell you that. He's an expert on shave of the day photos. He'd probably tell you the same thing. Okay, let's put this back.
Okay, moving back up, here we have the Joby tripod, and this is where the magic happens every so many days in the Soap Thing project. Here we have the spray bottle that I've been using forever to add water to the shave bowl when I make a lather. Here we have the chiseled face cryogen. This is the standard aftershave that I use on every sample video. So most of you have seen a lot of this and you're going to continue to see a lot of it. And here we have the Shave Nation alum block. I brought two of these. The other one I dropped it as soon as I unboxed it and it's cracked. So I'm going to have to find a way to uh, to make it not have sharp edges so that I can use the other one. But I really like these because they, they act like kind of a deodorant stick and they can cover a lot of real estate on your face all at once. So Shave Nation alum block. And then we, we just have a couple of what I guess I would call dumb reach uh, soap and aftershaves. Here we have a tobacco stick. I love the scent of this stuff. It's like an old school uh, spicy powdery sort of thing. And if I get home from work, I work at afternoon shifts, uh, 1500 to 2300. And if I'm just not feeling it, and I just want to hurry up and do a shave and go to bed. I'll usually use the tobacco stick and then probably chase it. Almost broke that one too. Chase it with some uh, Clubman musk is what I usually use uh, after that. And then over here we have a couple more. This is the uh, Ariana and Evans Shave Butter Wood and Lavender Scent with the Skin Food uh, Aftershave Balm. Like I said, this is another just dumb reach scent for if I just can't make up my mind what I want to shave with, I'll usually grab one of these two. Okay, as we bring the tour to a close, the last couple things are we have this secondary tripod, which is used to film the top-down shots of the lathering process. And underneath it is the Maxpedition blade bag. And I think I've showed people this before. Let me see if I can open it with the camera in my other hand. Yeah, as it turns out, I can't chew gum and fart at the same time. But whatever, here's the Maxpedition blade bag. And as you can see, we got bunches of just random blades in here. Usually from, if I had a couple blades left over from a pack, I would just dump them in here. So who knows what all kind of variety of blades in here. Some of them are actually pretty old that I've had for quite a few years. But that's the Maxpedition blade bag. And as we close the blade bag, we're going to close the book on this tour of the Soap Thing Shave Den. And that concludes the tour of the Soap Thing Shave Den. Questions or comments, put them in the comments section of the video. Otherwise, do us all a favor and shave like you mean it. Thanks for watching. So that's the Shave Nation alum block. Next up, we have a to bath stick. To bath? You take a bath with this. It's a bath stick. You just rub it all over your body when you're in the shower. Guys, this is by far the cleanest my bathroom has been since I moved in. I am not even joking.